Hey, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today, we're gonna to finish off our wiring. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you've been enjoying the progress we've been making on the project recently. Um, it finally feels like we're actually getting there and we're gonna be able to, to drive this car someday. Um, so today we're gonna try and continue the work I started last week, which was to wire the inverter um, into, the, into the car, into the um, motor and you know basically getting everything in place so that we can pretty soon start putting power through that inverter through the motor and turning the wheels even if it's still up on jack stands um, so the focus for today is to finish off doing what we need to do with the high voltage wiring and then get the signal wires that we laid a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> wired up to the relevant relays and that for the pre-charge circuit and controlling how we're ultimately going to get power from a battery pack into the DC side of the inverter. Um, so yeah, let's uh, kick that off. Oh, and give you a bit of an update on the um, drive shaft issue, which I think we've got resolved now. After a second attempt at getting the CV joint in place for the passenger side of our car, so the left hand side for for this country, um, it fit. So the uh, yeah, definitely a difference between the the two generations of Leaf transaxle. This one slides in perfectly. It's making contact with the um, the rest of the gearbox, and when I turn the wheel I can hear the motor uh, being spun which is absolutely fantastic news. So I finished buttoning up the suspension and now we've got the CV joints on both sides of the transmission um, suspension in place on both sides so that's kind of our mechanical um, connections complete uh, and so we're going to continue with the electrical all right, so definitely not what we're planning long term, but because I'm only using a small handful of batteries and they're small, I've just put a bit of plywood down, not, not even plywood, chipboard down uh, to create a platform alongside the inverter that I can place the batteries on, that I can place the um, pre-charge circuit on and just start to, yeah, start putting power through the inverter and through the motor. So let's start populating this space. All right, so here we've got the, uh, the core of our pre-charge circuit. Uh, two high voltage relays stolen from the power delivery module. Um, one pre-charge relay and one pre-charge resistor. Uh, so basically we'll be putting positive DC power through both of these and negative DC power through this one. We will have the pre-charge resistor in line here and we'll have um, yeah, nothing else on the negative side. So we've also got our two signal wires from the inverter. So one to switch pre-charge on and off and one to switch the main contactor on and off. And then we've got a series of positive and negative um, wires that I'm bringing through from the battery that I'm using to power this all, which isn't currently the car battery. Uh, it's just a, a small one I've got in the passenger footwell, hence the reason why I'm bringing cables forward. Um, so basically, each of these will have a negative wired into them. The pre-charge signal, pre-charge 12 volt will be wired into this one main contact wired will be wired into this one and this one will be wired onto the same circuit as the 12 volt that switches the um, inverter on.
Okay, so that's our pre-charged circuit. Um, now we need to get our batteries in. Uh, so wiring positive to these two terminals, negative to this one. Um, and then sort out our wiring from each of the relays here through to the underneath of the inverter where the uh, DC inputs are. Uh, Johannes Hubner, who's the guy who designed the logic board that I've replaced the standard Nissan Leaf on with, and he was just giving me a couple of tips. And one of them was to consider adding an extra layer of relays um, between the inverter signals and the uh, different um, high voltage relays and contactors. Um, and the reason for this is basically there's only a limited amount of current that's actually going to come through with the 12 on, on that 12 volt um, to switch things on, be it the precharge or the actual main contactor. And then that might not be sufficient for what we've actually need it for. Um, so I can put a lighter uh, relay in place uh, just to switch 12 volt from the car battery into the into the high voltage relays to, to switch them on and then there's no no struggle with um, the amount of current that would be coming through. Uh, these little high voltage relays I have here that I'm using as contactors actually probably wouldn't be a problem um, but what I would need for a full for full testing, full use of the car with a proper traction battery, um, it probably would be a bit more of an issue. So I'd rather get it right now and not have to go and change things too much when we install the um, proper batteries. So what I've got here is just some basic generic automotive relays, the type you'd use if you're installing you know, a more powerful stereo system or something like that. So we're going to splice um, the relevant wires from here into the the signal wires and ground uh, that I've already got set up and then connect these to the where the signals need to go into the um, into these individual uh, relays. So yeah let's get to it. So we've wired the additional layer of relays into the circuit. 12 volt signals coming from the inverter to the smaller relays and those relays will then switch on and that will pull 12 volts from the battery, pass it through the wires into the signal side of the high voltage relays and pre-charge relays and from there that will then signal them to switch on and they will then start to pull the power from the battery pack via the cables here and that power will then be directed to the DC bus of the inverter, initially via the pre-charge relay and then subsequently via the main contactor. So here's the cable we're using for our test DC bus. Um, it's only small, it's six mil square. Um, and we are going to use our crimping tool to get it in place. Okay, so we've got the power connections into the inverter loosely bolted up. I'm going to run them around the inverter for now. Um, I'm sure we'll have different routing for what we actually end up doing, but this will do. So give us a bit of slack and get some uh, lugs on these ends.
Okay, that's everything pretty much wired up. Um, now we just need to install some batteries, link them together, and then um, connect the plus and minus side. Um, before we do that, obviously, we'll we'll run some tests, make sure power is going to each of the the relays as as expected. So the one other thing I want to do um, while I'm back here, while I've got access and everything is just take these wires off and basically put some shielding mesh on them. Um, this is to prevent interference and a couple of people pointed out I might as well just get it done um, rather than waiting for another time to do it. So I'm going to get these wrapped in shielding mesh and then wrap them in orange tape so that they are um, I guess fully ready to go and compliant. So here's the metal wrap we're going to use. Um, I'm just going to disconnect the <clears throat> cables at both ends and get started. There we go, one shielded oranged high voltage cable. Now only two more to do. There we go, now those look like proper high voltage cables. So this is an interesting, yeah, um, endeavor. Uh, at the time I was ordering the cables, I couldn't quickly get uh, shielded or oranged cables. It was quite cool to just see how long it takes. Probably did these in about 20 minutes, I'd say. Um, so yeah, it's good to know for future future projects um, what you know what I need to do if I can't get any already shielded cable or or it turns out to be too expensive. Um, I've got, I can kind of quantify that now. All right, so now we can get these back in the car. All right, we've got our new wrapped shielded high voltage cables wired up. Um, we've got the shielding grounded to the body of the inverter and the same on the engine side. What I'm going to do now is try and fill out this bay with batteries um, and then we'll do some tests without anything wired up and then some tests with some stuff wired up. Here we go. Okay, so we've got space for about 18 batteries. Well, 18 batteries. Uh, they're 12 volts, I think six or seven amp, something ridiculously low like that. That gives us a nominal voltage of about 216 volts. Um, not exactly high power, but should be enough to get things spinning.
Okay, so there we have it. We're so close to being able to try and get this thing started, but I've done so much wiring over the last few days, splicing things together. I just don't trust myself. Um, so what I want to do is go end to end from the dash all the way back to here with a multimeter, checking every single circuit, every single connection to make sure it's right. Cause I'd hate after going to all this trouble of to try and put power through it and just end up with something blowing. Um, it's going to take me probably a couple of hours to do that, but it'll give me the peace of mind to then just kind of kick off with testing the um, power through the inverter and seeing where we get to. So that's actually pretty cool to see now. Uh, we've got an inverter, we've got batteries, we've got a motor, we've got drive shafts. Um, you know, we've got accelerators. Uh, we've basically pretty much got everything we need to be able to start start the car and try and run it uh, on electric power. Um, as I kind of said before, I I could just switch everything on right now and give it a go, but I'm really worried just by how many wires I got flowing around the place um, that I might have done something wrong and you know wired a positive to a negative or something ridiculous like that. So I want to go through the entire circuit, um, you know, sort of wire by wire, and just make sure everything's going where I believe it should be going, um, so that then I can start to attach a battery to it um, and just yeah do some tests and try and see if we can I guess make sure the inverter is still working then check to see if the pre-charge circuit's working and then ultimately if all that's going good um, try and turn the motor over but yeah um, uh, taking all of my restraint and self-control to not just wire a battery in and, and try and get going um, I'm going to do this the sensible way and make sure I don't undo hours of um, work with just being impatient so I hope you'll join me <clears throat> next time when hopefully we'll be putting power through the motor and, and turning it um, I hope you've been enjoying this series and you know if you have please subscribe if you're not already subscribed as always send me a comment if you've got something you want to to add or ask a question or anything like that um but yeah till then well thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time